Hi, it's Lee and welcome to The Tesla Economist. Now, as you probably heard, Silicon Valley Bank had an actual bank run. This occurs when too many depositors withdraw their money from banks simultaneously based on fears that the institution will become insolvent. It sounds like this was actually started by Peter Thiel having concerns with the bank and withdrawing funds and others following suit. SVB also locked in bonds at low interest rates and didn't hedge for the potential possibility that interest rates would increase so much, and as a result, their bonds have lost a lot in value. This may be the reason depositors were initially concerned and started withdrawing funds. The real question now, though, is this an isolated incident, or will it create contagion? And as always, there are plenty of mixed opinions out there, ranging from some thinking that this is the end of the financial system we know, to others claiming that the US banking system is still very strong. The question is, how will everyone else react? If there's total panic and everyone else wants to withdraw their funds and start bank runs elsewhere, then there'll be a domino effect of mass hysteria. It's important for the regulators to assure depositors and remind them that their funds are insured and that the majority of banks are still very secure. Silicon Valley Bank is not your typical bank. It's what a lot of startups and VCs use, and Silicon Valley is the heart of the innovation in the US. Now, a lot of these companies are in serious financial trouble. Many will not be able to make payroll and are now distressed assets. This would be very sad to see startups go under, especially given the chances that many are not yet in profit. This will have an effect on the future of the US. Imagine if a company like Tesla was in its startup stage and lost so much cash they can no longer make payroll and might end up going under if they couldn't find any other investors in time. As a result of these types of depositors, it means that the vast majority of funds and depositors are not insured something in the region of 90%, compared to a typical bank at around 40%. That is a big difference. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or FDIC, only insure up to the first $250,000, and a lot of these companies had millions, hundreds of millions, or even more deposited. This money is not completely gone though. It sounds like they should be able to recover more than 50 cents on the dollar, but it will take time for the bank to recover all their funds. Although the bank is looking for an acquisition that may be able to cover all deposits too in the meantime, which would be the ideal solution for all parties involved. What does this mean for the rest of the markets? Well, as the markets have been closed all weekend whilst everyone is working out the extent of the damage we won't know until they reopen. The Australian and New Zealand markets have opened and are down a couple of percent, but we'll have to wait to see how the Asian markets react too. Of course, Bitcoin has been trading all weekend it dropped below 20 from about 21,600, and now has pretty much recovered since. That's if Bitcoin is any sort of indicator. As a result of all this panic, it might mean that now the Fed may not be raising rates, or at least 50 basis points is likely off the table for now. Although we do have CPI numbers out this week too, which the markets will also react to. Now, although SVB was not necessarily a direct effect of higher rates, it has been served as a warning sign to the markets that rates are very high and things can break in the economy. SVP can be contained, but there may be others that break that are too big to fail. And then we enter a financial crisis, which some people believe the Fed are actually trying to force in order to stop inflation. And there's no such thing as a soft landing. This could just be a slight scare. The market will react, then look around, see if everything else is still okay, and recover. But as a result, we may not even see any more rate rises, and the market will like that too. But I expect there to be quite a bit of fear out there, as people are concerned more things in the economy may break. There may be more institutions that have locked in these lower rates too, and lost a fortune on bonds, similar to SVB. As Warren Buffett says, we don't know who's been swimming naked until the tide comes out. This may be the start of the tide coming out. It might slow down the economy as it possibly instills fear in the market. And the only thing to fear is fear itself. In order to combat inflation, these interest rates are not going to go down anytime soon, or at least not return to the target of 2%, possibly for years, unless there is some sort of financial crisis. So in other words, a soft landing would require no major banks or institutions to fail over the next couple of years despite such high rates. When the world has been used to historically low rates, that is the aim for a soft landing. Oh, and whilst there is still inflation. 
On top of that, the government also have to pay for their interest on their debts too, at these higher rates. And their debt is higher than it's ever been. More of their treasury bonds will come up for renewal and they'll have to pay these new rates. There's simply not enough government income to cover the higher interest on this debt. Or the other alternative is a financial crisis will create deflation and give the governments reasons to cut the rates so they can afford their interest as they have to restart the economy and need to make money cheap so people will start spending again. A market cash will remove a lot of equity out of the market and thus create deflation as people have less money. It means that rather than everyone paying for all this government spending with higher prices of goods, i.e. inflation, they will pay for it by losing value in all their assets. The government have printed so much money, it's not free money. Someone has to pay the bill. As the governments don't have enough money or income to pay for it, then someone else has to. Hence why we've been seeing a higher cost of living lately. This is us paying the COVID bill. A soft landing means we pay it slowly over the next couple of years with inflation and higher rates. But a financial crisis means we get the bill much earlier. Of course, I almost make this sound like it's just the US, but anywhere can trigger these events. In the late 90s, it was Thailand that started the Asian financial crisis. So if a country like Thailand can start a financial crisis, imagine what a country the size of China could do. China has a property bubble. Things could go easily wrong there. On the other hand, this is investing. There are always scares along the way of potential recessions. There have been scares of recession for the last five years or so, yet we've seen a massive bull run, with markets reaching new all-time highs. Just like money supply also reaching new all-time highs. This has been a very long bull run, and many have predicted recessions along the way, yet none have been right. However, recessions can be the best buying opportunities. It's hard to judge the extent of them, and yes, this time it is different, just like last time, and the time before that it was different too. Every time is different. This time, the main difference is the sheer amount of debt that the governments have acquired. It's just hard to know what can trigger a recession. It can come out of nowhere. I don't think SVB is the start of a too big to fail financial crisis. The markets will likely react, and obviously some stocks will get hit a lot harder than others, particularly companies like Roku, that had large amounts of funds in SVB. But the government and regulators are likely going to assure national depositors that their money is safe and insured. Then the market will eventually recover. Of course, like I said, it could be a wild week with CPI data coming up too. But there could be some buying opportunities as well. I think more than anything, this is an eye-opener to realise that it's highly possible that we could see more things break in the economy with rates this high. It does happen. The important thing is to make sure you are prepared for such an event and have funds put aside to get through a down economy. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.